All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be taking an early look at the winner of 2020 to 2021. I'm very excited to present this video to you guys. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also like to invite you to join our exciting Discord that I'm very active in down below. We would love to see you there. Now, for today's comment of the day, I wanna know what kind of winner are you hoping for this winter? Let me know your area and what kind of winner you're hoping for, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and first things first, we're gonna be taking a look at the model guidance for the precipitation forecast. Then we're gonna kind of get into some other things like our 500 millibar heights, and then we're also gonna take a look at that temperature forecast according to multiple models across the board. I'm also gonna be showing you guys my opinions as well. This is the first time I'm doing this. this is a very, very, very early outlook, but I'm gonna be showing you guys my extremely early thoughts on this winter so far. Now let's go ahead and look at all those precipitation forecasts according to these models. And these are up to date by June 26th, but in a month they might look different. Here's our Canadian model here, and you can see it features below average precipitation for the West Coast, above average precipitation for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley, and then below average precipitation there for the Southeast and the East Coast. And I actually agree with a lot of this except for the West Coast, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our Japanese model uh, and take a look at its precipitation forecast. All right, and here that is. It's called the Jams Tech model. You've probably heard of it, and this one I agree with the most as of right now with the precipitation forecast. This is a very traditional La Nina look. As you can see, we would be featuring above average precipitation there for the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the upper Midwest, as well as the Northwest regions of the United States. This is very, very typical in a La Nina, and this is definitely pretty much my thoughts as of right now. Also, you can see it features below average precipitation for a lot of the southern United States, including California, all the way through the south central United States, and especially the southeast there up the east coast. And you might be wondering, why is that? Well, in the case of an El Nino, which we're not going to be experiencing most likely, uh, we would see a lot of these nor'easters, and that's where a lot of the southeast and the east coast gets its precipitation during the winter time. In a La Nina, that's not a very frequent storm track. So what ends up happening is we don't see that nor'easter storm track. We don't see a lot of precipitation for the southeast or the east coast. That's just how it works. It doesn't make it impossible to see nor'easters, but they're very frequent in an El Nino, and they're not very frequent at all in a La Nina. So that's the reasoning behind that, and that's why it's so easy to forecast a precipitation forecast for the wintertime, because an El Nino or a La Nina almost completely dictates what we're going to see as far as precipitation. All right, now we're going to move on towards our CFS model and take a look at its precipitation forecast, and then we're going to start getting into our 500 millibar geopotential heights. I'll teach you all about what that means, and then after that, we're going to get into that temperature forecast according to a lot of these models. And in, I'm also gonna include a handmade map of what I think as far as temperatures for this upcoming winter. All right, and here we are taking a look at that CFS model here. And as you can see, it doesn't feature a lot here. This model likely is kind of confused and it doesn't have a solid opinion yet, which is okay. Uh, the only two things to take away here is that it also includes the below average precipitation there for California that I'm predicting, and also the southeast and the east coast featuring below average precipitation. So yes, all three models that we've taken a look at, all three include that below average precipitation for the southeast and the east coast and California. My confidence in that is moderately high and it's growing each day. Obviously, the more likely uh, that we see it a La Nina, the more likely that we see the below average precipitation for those two different regions. Like I said before, that's very frequent in a La Nina. And if we see a La Nina, I'm going to be very confident that that's the conditions we're going to be seeing. All right, now here's that 500 millibar geopotential height. And all you need to know is this map shows us really well where this model thinks the ridges and the troughs will be. The colors aren't as important as you would think. They are slightly important, but really what you want to pay attention to is all of those lines. Uh, a ridge would be when those lines kind of kind of grow up and they kind of have a ridge. I, I don't know how to, else to put it besides there's just a ridge. For instance, on this map, you can see the ridge is for the West Coast and the trough is for the Eastern United States. And this map is for November, so we're starting out in November. Let's go ahead and move it to December and take a look at that. The reds move up to Canada, 
but we do see kind of white no color shades there for the southeastern United States and the south central United States. But the trough is still for the eastern United States and the ridge is still for the western United States. This looks like a very typical positive PNA pattern and this would encourage colder temperatures for the eastern United States if this was to be the case. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to where things look a lot colder on this model actually for January and February. And then we're also going to take a look at March and then we're going to move on to a different model. Now, by the way, you're going to want to take this with a giant grain of salt. Always keep in mind that we're only approaching July right now. So thoughts right now, I, I think the perfect way to put it is it's early thoughts. This is just thoughts that I have for this upcoming winter. Uh, I am including some predictions, obviously, by saying I think it's going to be dry in the southeast and the east coast and the southwest. But my predictions might change. We have six months until winter. Well, five months, basically. But still, it's a very far way out. I have gotten this video requested many times, and I do have some thoughts. That's what I'm sharing in this video. Uh, but you do want to take it with a grain of salt because obviously, again, it's very early on, and these models are going to change. Some of my thoughts are going to change. Some of my thoughts will stay the same, though, and that's the value you can take away from this video. Now, here's for January. As you can see, blues start to show up there for Canada and the eastern United States. It's very clear there is still a ridge for the west coast there and then a trough in the central and eastern United States here for January. This would probably be a pretty cold month for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the New England states if that was to pan out. And then for February 2021, very far away, you can see it has those heights become very blue for the eastern United States and the Great Lakes. Honestly, this is a little over overboard for even my predictions, but this would be a very good look for cold and snow, obviously very far out. It's going to look different than this no matter what. Uh, we see the western United States still has that ridge, and we also see good blocking. We see the reds there for Greenland and northern Canada. This would be a really good pattern uh, if it was to take place, but again, the likelihood of this actually looking exactly like this is very, very low at this point. And then here's for March. You can see that it kind of recedes a little bit, but still, overall, this model is trending at more troughs in the east, more ridges in the west, which is very interesting to take away, and it's going to be an important note to take away as we move forward. All right, now here's that Canadian model, 500 millibar geopotential heights for the entire winter, so December, January, February, which is meteorological winter. And you can see that we do have those yellows, and it does kind of trend at a little bit more of a trough in the east than it does in the west. Uh, and those blues are mostly for Canada. Now, what you want to take away from this is this would probably have some pretty frequent troughs up there for the upper Midwest, but this is an overall pretty warm look for the Southeast, the South Central, and the Southwest. And the colder the normal temperatures would most likely be for Montana, uh, Wyoming, the Dakotas, as well as Minnesota and Wisconsin, maybe the Great Lakes as well. But that's mostly where the colder the normal conditions would be on this model. All right, now here's that European ensemble model, and the furthest this one, or sorry, the European seasonal model, and the furthest this one goes out is going to be for December, and as you can see, this one also has a trough in the east, ridge in the west, so all of our models are in agreement for that as well. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at those temperature forecasts according to some of these models, and then also I'm going to give you guys some of my very early thoughts as far as the temperatures go, and then we're going to take a look at some sea surface temperature anomaly things just to give you guys some notes to take away for kind of why these conditions are expected and then we're going to get into our comment of the day. All right and here we are taking a look at the temperature anomalies and this is for the February 2021 on the CFS model because again this was the one that looked very cold. This is what the temperature anomalies would look like in a pattern like that. Very cold in the east and some of the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, New England and then warm in the west. Overall, warm in the West seems to be the trend as of right now. It seems like for the past five winters or so, that has been the trend on the models. So I am taking that with a grain of salt. I understand that there is a good chance that we see colder than normal conditions for the Pacific Northwest and also the Rocky Mountains area. Obviously, the Southwest in a La Nina pattern would really trend at being warmer than normal, but we'll have to move forward and see uh, how we feel about that. But as of right now, I'm most confident in colder than normal conditions for for instance, Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, areas up there in the upper Midwest. That's the only area that I'm really eyeballing for colder than normal conditions so far. All right, now here's the sea surface temperatures, uh, or sorry, this is the, actually the air, air temperatures on the, or the Jams Tech model. And as you can see, it has some cold up there for Canada, but really overall it has warmth for the United States so far. I expect this model to flip back and forth. This one is 
especially known for really just changing its opinion all the time. So we're going to just watch this one as it develops, but really um, not too confident in that one yet. Now here's that temperature map that you probably saw in the thumbnail. This is kind of some early thoughts. Just wanted to show this. This is going to be major renovations are going to be done to this map throughout the year. So really take it with a grain of salt. But as of right now, the southwest, a lot of the south central United States and the southeastern United States, I'm expecting some warmer than normal conditions throughout some of those orange areas, especially the southwest. A La Nina would really typically favor warmer than normal conditions along the southern United States. And that's kind of why I'm feeling that way. Colder than normal conditions are likely... Uh, throughout a lot of Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, and portions of Wisconsin as well. In that pink area, that's where I'm especially confident we could have some colder than normal conditions. In those lighter blues, I think it could be cold at times. Not really confident in any of that yet, uh, but right now the, it's kind of leaning that way, but hardly. So it's very early on, like I said, so we have some very initial thoughts right there. Now, to get into kind of the whys, for why I'm thinking certain things. Well, here's our La Nina first off. You can see a lot of those greens. That's our developing La Nina. It's going back and forth. There is the slight chance that we do have a neutral winter instead, which would really encourage colder in the east, snowier in the east. La Nina would be more receded back to the northwest. So you snow lovers in the east, you really want it to be a neutral winter, not a La Nina. If you're in the upper Midwest and you're a snow lover, you want it to be a La Nina, not a neutral winter. I hope that makes sense. Now here's the northern Atlantic. Really going to want to watch this one too. Right now we have developing colder than normal sea surface temperature anomaly south of Greenland. We want that to be warmer than normal, so we would need to see a big flip in that for a negative NAO pattern. Uh, but right now it looks like a positive P uh, NAO pattern would be likely. And then here's the North Pacific as well. Uh, this is a neutral PDO. That's what I would call it. It's an undecided one. We're really going to need to see how this develops. That's going to be a huge factor this upcoming winter, and we have no idea what it's going to do. So that's just another factor where we really just have no idea yet. But here's the Jamstech model's sea surface temperature forecast, and it does have a positive PDO forecast. So you can see those reds there off the west coast of Canada and the United States. That would really encourage warmer than normal conditions in the west and colder than normal conditions in the east, so we'll need to watch that closely. Also, take a look at the La Nina down there, those blue temperatures in the central Pacific. We'll need to watch that closely as well. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how has this June been so far for you guys? And Derek Everything said, I'm in Connecticut and I'm sick of the heat. I think a lot of people up north are feeling that way. And then a lot of people down south have felt like it's been quite pleasant because in the north, we've had above average temperatures. And in the south, we've had below average temperatures so far in June. So very swayed depending on how far north or south you are. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.